What's up, everybody? Uh, Bruno here, and I'm here uh, with Kira, uh, huh? the lovely Kira. What's up? How you doing? I'm really good. How are you? Good, good, good. So I've talked to Kira a little bit uh, about the game and stuff and about herself, and, uh, you know, she's great to talk to. Uh, you're you. fresh out of the house. You've been out for about a week or so now, right? And yeah. how are you making out? How are you feeling? How's everything right now? Honestly, uh, things have been a little hectic for me. It's been crazy to see all the love that's come out of me being in there. Like, when I was inside the house, I had no idea, like, how Canada was viewing me. I didn't know, like, I don't know, just anything. I was so wrapped up in the game, in my head, and then coming out to so much love and support definitely softens the blow a lot. I mean, obviously, I would have loved to still be in the house or been in jury, but... For sure. That's the thing is when you're in there, you have no idea. You literally have no idea, you know, yeah. what people think about you or what's going yeah. on. And, you know, and, and as you've, now you've played it, so you see how it's easier when you're at home and you're watching it on TV and mm -hmm. it's like you kind of get everyone's answers and stuff and, and going in the house is a lot harder because your reality is your perception. So the things that you see are your reality. And if, if you trust someone, that's your reality. Uh, when in reality, people can be against you or whatever. Uh, but no, so I want to say you got to keep, you should keep your head up. You did an awesome job. Uh, you got lots and lots of love. You got a really good head on your shoulders, and uh, you're very easy and uh, and good to talk to. So, um, yeah, no, welcome to the family and everything. It's it's great, great, great to have you and great to chat with you. Um, so yeah, so I want to just go over some things. I want to talk uh, about actually first thing, the very first thing I want to talk to you about, which I was pissed about, and I talked to you about this on the phone before, uh, was the whole thing when you guys walked in the house and you had that uh, that twist, and it was like uh, oh the you know, breach. Yeah. yeah, man. Like, what is that, man? And and that and legit, it pissed me off. I, I was very vocal about it. And I, I openly said, I said, you know, out of everybody there, you got screwed the most because it, it's, it had something, they said something about you that really affects the game where some other people, it was just like, whatever, they played hockey or they've never seen a season yeah. or they're sensitive. Like, who really gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like, who gives a shit, man? Oh, oh they're okay. sensitive. Good for them. You know what I mean? So, uh, that part I, I, I was pretty pissed off about, but what are your, what were your thoughts? Like, what was going through your head when you saw that screen pop up and you're like, uh Oh, what did I say? Or like, what are they going to say about me? Like, what were your thoughts kind of when that, when that popped up on the screen? Truthfully, I was like, here it comes. Like I knew something bad was going to happen. Like before I walked in the house, before I even did like my bio or anything, I just had this feeling. I was like, man, I know what type of person I am. I know what people expect from me. Like, when I saw the breach starting to happen and other people's um, secrets coming out, I was like, man, mine is going to be the worst one here. I just know it. I just know it. And of course it was. So. It was. It definitely was. And it, and it comes back, you know, a few weeks later when, you know, uh, Kira's talking in their speech saying, yeah. you, you said in your breach, you know, I'm a good liar. And I believe that. And, and you know what? That, that sucks. And, and for me personally, I hate, I don't like twists. I'm not a fan of twists. Never have. Uh, I'm not that. I don't like that kind of the the stuff in the game, the twist. But when it when one like that that had no, had, it brought nothing to the table, nothing to the show, and it kind of puts doubt in people's minds and it ruins someone's game. I kind of don't like that. Uh, so that that was kind of crappy. So when you walked in the house, okay. So you walk in the house. You what were you? Were you in one of the first groups or were you the last group? What group were you in? Yeah, I was in the second group. So already in the house was like. Adam, Chelsea, Dane, Laura, and Eddie. And then I walked in with Kaylin, Sam, Anthony, Mark. Yeah. So, so what far. were your like first impressions? Like when you walked in, it's like first impressions. Who, oh who like, what, what was it? What was it like? What was your first impressions? Okay. Well, walking into the house, first of all, was a total dream. I was like, shit, man, I've been so obsessed with this show for so long and now I'm here. And that's super weird and super crazy. So first off, I was totally shocked. Um, and then upon meeting everyone, like the second I met Adam, I thought, okay, this is like the person that I'm definitely going to be competing the most with. Um, people look at me, they don't really think I'm that competitive, which is a good thing. Um, sure. cause I'm honestly not very athletic, but I definitely, if I want something like I'm going to go get it. So I knew he was going to be someone who I should probably try to align myself with, but I don't know, like first impressions, you kind of get a vibe off somebody. I didn't really vibe with him that well. But also everybody was like super nervous and like no one knew really what to do. I really liked Eddie right away. I actually pulled him to the side and I was like, I want to work with you. Like I really, really liked him. I felt the same way about Kaylin. Um, Sam and I started off on a good foot. I didn't really talk to Chelsea much. I don't know. Every, everything was just really uh, very fast, fast paced. But that, yeah. really, man, that really freaking sewered me. 
For sure, and and that's the thing. And, and going in the house, especially the the beginning, everyone's kind of all rattled. Everyone's kind of excited. Everyone's kind of just kind of trying to talk to everybody. I'm not really making too much sense. Just kind of trying to learn their names. You're not going to learn their names for a few days. Totally. And it, it is it, it's totally hectic, man. What I used to do uh, when I was at the first couple of weeks uh, is I'd walk behind people and see their mic packs, and then I don't know if their names were on the mic packs this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I would kind of like sneak over and read their name, you know, their name on their mic pack, and be like, oh hey, uh, Neha or whoever, you know, what's up? Because uh, I didn't know who the hell anybody was, man. You know, you don't know who the hell these people are. Um, but yeah, like big surprises. What was your biggest surprise going in? Like when you, when you're at home watching the game and you think, okay, I could do this or this is gonna be easier or whatever, whatever. What was your biggest like when you went in? It was like, damn, like that. That is not what I thought. That is so different than what I expected. Like something like competitions, the ceremonies. What yeah. was like the biggest shock factor to you going in? Oh, oh, definitely the the ceremonies. Like I didn't realize like how much work gets put into these ceremonies. Um, you know, cast, crew, production, like everybody is like really, really hands on deck for these. And yeah, I mean, you think when you're watching the show, it's like it's intense for about ten minutes. When you're in the house, it's intense for like four hours. <laughs> you just yeah, have to true. sit with it. You know, you're going on the block. You just have to sit in it, knowing that there's a speech coming at you. Like this is why you're going up. Like. And I had to do that three times. Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, man? See, I actually I do it one time. So, I, And I know the feeling, man. And I'll tell you something. So uh, the one thing, because playing the second time, you, you, pick on a lot, you pick up a lot of things from the first time. And I knew I was getting nominated simply by the cameras. Because the cameras, you know, when, when the speeches are going or whatever, the cameras turned and faced me. So right away, it's like, okay, I know I'm going on the block. And there's a lot, like, I've, I've done, like, tip videos and stuff for people going in. And that was one thing I always said is pay attention to the cameras because they'll tell you a lot more than you realize. Like, if you're in a conversation in a room and the camera turns to the door, you know someone's going to come in and bust your conversation. Little things like that. Right. So there's a lot of little tells and stuff that, I, you know, I, it took me a couple times to do it. But, but you know, what I figured it out. But anyway, so I want to talk about the game. I want to talk about everything, the people. Uh, blood vetoes, Damien. Uh, actually, I want to talk about Damien's um, yeah. the twist, the first twist, man. What did you think about all that? Him going in the house first and uh, watching uh, the TV and stuff. What, what were your thoughts on it? What did you think about that? Okay, so literally had no idea that happened. Like mm -hmm. none. Like Damien already says a few words a day, but uh, <laughs> he is damn good at keeping secrets because no one in that house has any idea that that was a thing. Come coming out and seeing that, that was a huge shock to me. I had no idea he'd already been in that room, like, twice. Um, and he, yeah, crazy. But I I thought, okay, so I thought the first the first time he went in, it was, like, really interesting. It was like, okay, he's found this room. He knows that there's this veto or whatever. And then the second one about him hearing uh, Adam talk to Dane about wanting to do a four-guy alliance, where did he take this information? Nowhere. He should have just... I was like the closest person to him. It was Damien, me, and Esty. We were very, very close. And out of those three, I was definitely closer to Damien than Esty was to Damien. I'm honestly really surprised that he didn't tell me on that about that because I had brought that up to him. I had been like, listen, I really think like this is what's going on and these people are latching on to these people because it's an extra vote and eight votes controls the house. And he was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like he doesn't really give me much to work with. And that's, that's the thing I never understood too. He saw it. He saw Adam firsthand, you know, work with Dane or whatever they did the first night. And that's what I, that's the part I never understood is why didn't he use it? At first it's like, okay, because Adam won HOH, I get it. He doesn't want to kind of put his name out there. Right. But as the, as the game goes on, like you got to throw this information out on a week that you could take a shot at him. Like, especially the people he's working with. I think, I thought for sure he should have told you guys, uh, at least get you guys the heads up, get you some information. That's the whole thing when you're working with people is you want to fill them in on what's going on. You want to come together and make a plan. Uh, that, that part I didn't understand. I, I, I don't know. I didn't understand what he was doing there, but whatever. I mean, uh, it, I guess he knows what he's doing in there, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I honestly didn't understand. And then the whole, I don't know if you, are you caught up on the, on the season? Did you watch everything? You know, I haven't watched any of the episodes that I'm really a part of. So I've seen evictions that I'm not a part of and nominations yeah. that I'm not a part of, but anything that has to do with me, I haven't watched. Yeah, it's tough. And I'll tell you, man, even the, like the, when I, came home the first time I watched it even hearing my own voice it's t it's weird like it's weird yeah. to see. and both times I haven't watched past my eviction once even my evictions hard to watch so 
I'll watch up to it. I'll see me walk out the door. I turn it off. I'm done. I don't want to see it again. It's tough. It's tough to see, man. It's tough to see. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So I, I understand. I, com- I completely understand. So you're not kind of up to date. Like, you know, basically what's going on and, uh, and, and stuff. You haven't watched what they put together, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, I'm just so, on Twitter and everything. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. So the, okay. So the, um, the blood veto and all that stuff, there was like the vote. So people were a little bit, um, I don't know. They, I don't think they liked how the blood veto got put into the game where it was the, uh, and, and cure got it because I believe people felt now I I'm indifferent to it. I, I, whatever. I don't really care for either way, but what, uh, what people are saying is because, you know, Damon got the vote at the beginning and I guess that was supposed to be part of the blood veto and all that stuff. Now that's a big game changer. If Damien did have it, you know, it changed everything. A hundred percent. It's everything. 100 percent so uh, you know that and it changes your game it changes everything which okay. kind of sucks it kind of sucks now uh, man, like uh, it, it would have been nice to see kira use that blood veto what were your thoughts did you think kira was going to use it when you were on the block did you guys like did, she, did did they give you any indication of that that they had something was there anything in the air or was it totally like you had no idea until it ca- kind of came out so when we were uh, sent to the backyard and, you know, the blood veto was presented, we had to make that unanimous decision right away. It was like, I knew I wasn't going to get it. And I knew Mark was never going to get it because we both knew we were going to go up on the block. There's no way in hell I'm giving it to Mark. And there's no way in hell Mark is giving it to me. It doesn't matter what the rest of the house thinks. Like Mark and I were not about to give it to each other. So us fighting for it would be completely redundant. It would have made great TV. Don't get me wrong. But at this point in the game, my target was huge. Every single week, somebody was throwing my name to the HOH, wanting me to go up. Like, it was a battle for me. So I was like, I need to take a step back here. Let somebody who's, like, in my opinion, the least dangerous person to have this kind of power, have this power. So when Kira said, hey, you know, I would love to have this, I was thinking to myself, well, I'm trying to build a relationship with Sam right now because I do need Sam in the game, and I do think Sam needs me in the game. And for me to continue to build that trust with her, you know, actions speak louder than words. I would rather Kira get this power and we can start building something together rather than me try to argue for it. So when Kira got it, I felt pretty good at that time. Kira had told me they wanted a guy out. Sam had told me they wanted a dude out. Like everybody was on board. Like, okay, like I don't want to get a girl out this week. You know, we've had so many girls go like, let's just go for a dude. Like let's get it done. And I was totally on board, obviously. Um, but then as the week progressed, I don't know, for some reason, Kira just completely like switched on me. I have no idea really where this came from. I know there's like a lot of theories out there about why they changed their mind. I don't know. Truthfully, like to this day, I don't know. And when they were talking about the breach saying like, yeah, you, you said you were a good liar. Where does that even come from? Yeah. That was five weeks ago. And you're bringing this up now. Like, I, I don't know. It was, ugh. And that's the thing, and it's funny because I see, and I've seen this again in the season where, like, now Mark is HOH and he's talking about things that happened two weeks ago. You gotta and move on. You gotta move on. It's absolutely. Insane. Move on. Absolutely. You gotta reset every week. Last week is last week. Look ahead because if you're looking back, you're gonna miss what's happening in front of you. And look at Mark, man. What a, what a butcher of an HOH now. Horrible. Oh my God. Horrible. I was so excited thinking he was gonna do something and he didn't. And like that's the thing, right? Like everyone is going after me saying like, you said for so long you wanted to go for Sam and Adam and now you're going to change and work with them. Truthfully, yes, because that's how the game works. In the beginning, yes. it would have made sense for me to make that move. Now it doesn't make sense for me. It's not Absolutely. a personal thing. It's game. You've got to do what's best for the game. Oh, and, so and you're, you're, a, you're 150% right. And, and that's what you got to do. If that's what you need to do to, to better your game for the next week, you yeah. do it. You do what you got to do. It's a game of survival. And I can use season five as an example. There was at one point there was Ike and Dimitri against me and Kevin. And we came together and said, listen, we got to work together or they're going to pick us off. As much as we were going head to head, it's like, yeah. no, this stops here. We have to work together or we're screwed. And that was that was the best play for all of us. Didn't work yeah. out that way. But, but you have to. You have to literally look ahead. Uh, you could be enemies with someone one week and the next week it's like, hey, I need your number. Let's just do what we got to do. Let's survive another week. Next week's another week. And and you're right. It's If you had to work with Adam and Sam to get ahead, that's what you got to do. It's a game of survival. And that's one thing. That's a difference between playing the game and watching it from home or, you know, the people like the fans on Twitter. And it's something against them. They just don't have that experience in there where it's like you're in this kind of your backs against the wall mode or you're in survival mode or yeah. you're just trying to better your game. 
you do what you got to do. It doesn't matter. You got to sometimes you got to say the, the wrong thing. Sometimes you got to do the wrong things just to get ahead. <laughs> and, and, and that's something that they'll never understand. Another thing is like just body language in the house and energy in the house when you walk in a room, well, uh, you know, hundred percent. But that's something you'll never feel until you play. And, uh, and, you know, and, and it's, it's good to like, that's why I like talking to people that have played and it's, it's like, cause they get it, they get it. You walk yeah. in a room, it's like, Oh, what's going on? You can feel the energy. Just like it's, it's heavy in here. Like, okay, they're talking about me. They don't want me in here, totally. whatever it is. Uh, and stuff like that. So what, so you were obviously, you, you knew about the pretty boys, you were onto them, you knew what was going on. Did, yeah. did you obviously didn't know the name? Uh, but you knew that was a thing, right? You knew it was a thing. And uh, it sucks because it, it, it happens in there. Sometimes you know what's going on, but it's, it's, it's convincing other people to open their eyes and be like, this is what's going on. But the problem yeah. is, is when they don't believe you, they don't believe you. And that's just the way it is because their mind's made up and it's a game of lies and manipulation. So for all the, the people you're talking to know is that you're the one lying to them, trying to put a target on these guys. And it sucks because you see the truth and you can't. And you're trying to explain it to someone and they're like, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it. And that kind of sucks. So like, when did you, when were you kind of, um, like aware of the guy Alliance? Was it early on? Like week one, week two, week three? Uh, when did you kind of piece it all, like start piecing it all together? Um, honestly it was week two. Like, I know that sounds like, I don't know, maybe people don't believe me, but I had a conversation with SD week two and I said to her, wouldn't it be amazing if, uh, Anthony, Mark, Dane, and Adam were all working together. Because think about it. Anthony is getting close to Corey. Adam is getting close to Sam and Chelsea. Dane is getting close to you. And Mark is trying to build a relationship with me. And I said, they would have eight votes. Those eight votes would carry them all the way through jury, no problem. When they get there, they could easily go against us. I said that to Esty and she's like, stop. Like, that would be so smart. And I'm like, yeah, I think it would be really smart. And I was like, I just want to see... Like, you know, two HOHs have happened already. Adam didn't put up any of the guys. Dane also didn't put up any of the guys. Like, I just want to see how it kind of plays out. And then when Chelsea put me up in week three, that's when things kind of shifted for me because I thought, well, she's the first female HOH. And if she's targeting me and not these guys, then I, I need to put her on my radar. Before that happened, I was trying to build a relationship with her. And after that happened, it was like, I couldn't. So when she brought up to me, when she was on the block the next week, like, you know, I think there's this guy's alliance and everything, you know, I think we should work together. I was kind of like, where is this coming from? Like, if you were thinking this, why didn't you do anything about it? Like you targeted me and then you targeted Kaylin, which are yeah. two people that are not a part of that. So we're both thinking the same thing, but I just, I don't know. We just handled it differently. So it's unfortunate because I was really pressing that into Esty before I left. Like the last week I was in the house, week five, I was drilling it into her that like, this is what's going on. Don't trust Dane with everything. Everybody thinks you run to him with everything and you need to stop that. Like you can't do that. And she was like, no, Kiki, like we can trust him and all this stuff. And I was like, but we can't with everything. Like that's the game. Like you've got to do some things to yourself. Now I, I completely hear you. Now, now Bobby on season three, he's my boy still to this day. Bobby Halad is like my best friend. And I, I see him every weekend still since season three. Oh. Uh, but, but we're in the same boat. I, I know exactly how you feel because I, it was the same thing. We had an alliance and I'm trying to tell him, you know, we got to get out of it. We got to get out of it. And he was like, no, I, I trust it or I trust these people. And, and I, know, I know how you feel and how frustrating it can be when you see something and, and the person you work with doesn't see it. I completely see it um, for sure. So why do you think it is that these people, like nobody's going to go for Adam or Dane or at least up until now, were people afraid of them? Were they afraid to, for the, the backlash? Uh, or you just think that they're doing a good job of keeping people kind of in check and, and making them do the moves that they want? Like what do, what do you think it is? And, and, and another thing is why do you think uh, Damien – hasn't been considered this big target man this guy is an athlete he's a he, you know he's a he's a this guy's good man like you know good as in the, as in he's a, an athletic guy right. but they're kind of just overlooking him all the time and those are the kind of players when you overlook them too long it gets to the point in the game where they get the upper hand because they're the number that everybody wants to use and i think he's going to be in that position soon where people can be like no no we got to use this guy and he's going to be the one to be able to kind of pick and choose what he where he wants to go and the information is all going to start coming to him it usually happens around this time in the game why do you why do you think that that they don't go for this guy what what, what do you think it is 
Honestly, I think with, okay, somebody like Adam is very um, intense. Like when you're just around his presence in general, like I think it's because he's a Scorpio. He's just like a really intense dude. Like he looks at you and it's intense. He's got <laughs> energy. So his social game was pretty much non-existent. The only social game he had was with Sam. And then in extension of that, Chelsea, and then sort of with Dane as well. Dane has the best social game out of everyone. He is like the most likable dude ever. I sewered him on my way out. And as we were hugging, he's like, I love you. And I was like, I love you too. Like, he's <laughs> such a cool dude. It sucks because he's the type of guy who can totally win this. With Damien, the thing is, is that he's so cool and calm and collected. Like, he's like, I told him this when we were in the house. I was like, still waters run deep. And that's how I feel about him. Like, he's so calm and he's so solid in who he is that I think other males can definitely not understand that because, you know, everyone's fighting for attention, fighting for this position. Damien doesn't need to fight for it. Damien knows who he is. Like, I am such a Damien fan, like, in the house, outside the house. Like, I want him to go far. I hope they do keep overlooking him. And I hope he just brings it out because I know there's a fire in him. From week one, he's wanted to gun for Adam. I don't know now if it's the right thing for him to do. Maybe going after Dane would be a better shot because Dane will have more jury votes. But uh, yeah, I'm really hoping Damien pulls it out. He's just such a calm dude. Like you'll you'll meet him and you'll just understand what I mean. It's just yeah, it's no, perfect. and it's funny because you know we talk like you know me and the and the other alum we talk about who we, who we want to meet and stuff. And Damien's one of the guys that even pre-game I was like, this guy seems normal. Like this guy seems. Yeah. <laughs> like a normal good guy. Like this is someone I can hang out with, you know. You know, d you know, it doesn't seem like he has an ego or anything like that. And those are the kind of people I like, man. Just the down to earth. Just they want to have fun. Just get get stupid, you know. There's, you know, I don't care. You know? <laughs> like that's just whatever, you know. So, uh, no, I'm I'm excited to meet him. I think he's I think he's gonna be a great guy, uh, for sure out of the house. And and that's the thing is like I was saying, I think a, a character like that where he's this far in the game. Like he's on the block. I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard any spoilers or whatever happened today. I don't know, but I can assume Corey's going. Uh, I but I really don't know. But this is the kind of guy he's sitting on the block on eviction night. How is he safe? This is this guy played like pro hockey or semi pro hockey or something. This guy's an athlete, man. This guy can do some damage. Uh, and you know he, he has no enemies in the house. Like this, these are the times to get rid of these people because it's going to be hard to get them out down the road. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I you know what? I think he's doing a good job. I mean, you don't see much of him on the TV, but I've said it before. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good thing. True. That means they're not mixed up in the trouble. They're not a target. They're not a backdoor option. Uh, usually, those are the people that get a lot of screen time. Is the ones that are kind of mixed up in everything. And he's not. So you know what? He doesn't. He doesn't fit in the storyline. Uh, which where the problems are, which is good. That's a good thing. It's a it's a it's a good it's a good thing. So you're saying like you think Dane has the best game? Uh, I think he's doing a good job. I think Dane has a really good social game. Uh, Preseason, I had two picks. It was you were my girl, and Dane was my guy. Those were my two pre picks. Hundred percent. You. It was you and Dane. I, I won't deny it. I'll tell anybody that it was you and Dane. One hundred percent. And so, but as the game went, like obviously you're you're out now. But now as the guys are uh, who's left. I, I'm kind of rooting for Adam, man. I don't know. I like the I like I like the story. I don't know why. I like the, uh, you know, now that Sam's gone, and nothing against Sam, but now that Sam's gone, it's kind of like, hey, he opens his eyes. It's like now he's starting to play. You see him, you know, he's making connections with people. Totally. He's kind of trying to, you know, get himself out there. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes you're getting blinded and you don't realize. And you know, as, and I'm not. This is nothing against Sam at all, whatsoever. But sometimes when you get in a showman or whatever it is, you're blinded. And as soon as she left, you can see he's kind of playing now. So yeah. uh, I was cheering for him to win that that uh, veto, and I want to see him do some damage. I want to see him go after the boys. I hope he goes after the boys. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that, that's that's it on that. What do you think of Anthony's game? What do you think of Mark's game? Uh, you want me to start with Mark? I'll start with Mark. You want me to start with Mark? I'll say it. I'll say it. What? I'll say it. Listen, I never talk shit about house guests because I'm not about that. But holy shit, man, this is the first time I there's someone I just uh, you know what? I don't care. Mark, <laughs> he can go. He can go, man. I, it's the first time I don't talk shit, and, and it's nothing against the guy on a personal level. It's it's all game. It's always game. I don't I don't try to get personal, but man, that guy can go. You know his whole. Pre, did you watch his pregame interviews and all that stuff? I haven't. Okay, so his whole pregame interview is he wants to get in with the Dream Alliance. Uh, stage one, stage two, he's going to do whatever. Stage three, he's going to turn on them, blah, 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 blah. And so he finally gets HOH, and that's the thing. is People are like, oh, finally he's going to do it. This is what he's been talking about for six weeks. Yeah. This is the, He's going to do it. And he gets HOH, and what does he do? He puts up uh, 
Esty and, uh, well, Adam, but then he puts up Esty and uh, Damien, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, so his whole, he's been talking for six weeks. And anyway, uh, uh, that's Mark for me. That's my thoughts on Mark. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts on Mark. But, uh, okay, moving on. Anthony, uh, I think Anthony's doing okay. I think he, uh, the first bit, he was kind of under the radar. I, again, you lived with them, so you know way more than I do. You, there doesn't matter what I think and what I say. <laughs> You've lived with them. You know better than me and anybody else watching this video. You know just better than all of us. What's his like energy like? What's what are people's thoughts about Anthony in the house? What do they think about him? Well, is the show is the show doing him justice or is it doing him a favor? You know, I think uh, I think the show is definitely doing him a favor now. Uh, when I was in the house with him, it was very interesting because Anthony was somebody who didn't go to anyone everybody had to go to him to talk and it's interesting because when Corey came in the house she was the same way she didn't want to go to other people to talk games she wanted people to come to them obviously she had her little mission of making her three final two deals but other than that Corey is somebody who like she'll go sit by herself Anthony the same way go sit by themselves and it's like who's gonna come talk to me who's gonna talk game with me today like they will rarely go and talk to other people yeah. um I think Anthony has been doing well. I think when I was in the house with him, he was heavily, heavily relying on the other members to do things. He was very much playing like the card where it's like, I'm kind of here, but I'm not necessarily playing yet. So now that I'm out of the house and I'm seeing, you know, how things are playing out, it's interesting because what I see from Anthony is completely different than what I saw when I was in the house. So I don't know if it's just the point in time of the game where it's taken a turn and now he's kind of like upped his uh, strategy and wants to take more control of the boys because he hasn't won any competitions. So if he's going to use this, you know, my social game was everything, my strategy was everything. Now is the time to really press that into the other members of the Alliance. So maybe that's why he's doing it. Um, if so, that's awesome for him. I do think it was a little bit bold of him to say that he could beat Adam and Dane in the end, based yeah, on I now. I was like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But Adam, we'll see. I mean, if he starts pulling out wins, then all the power to him. It just hasn't happened yet. And I know that uh, there are competitions that he just threw because he was like, I, I don't need to win it. So yeah, fair enough. Now, now, just you watched last episode. I uh, have oh uh, Sundays or Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh. What about okay. yesterday's? Yesterday's what? Uh, yesterday. Wednesday. Okay, so on yesterday's episode, you see a lot of him talking about how he he talks about how he runs the house. Nobody does anything without his permission and stuff like that. So a guy, to me, this is just my yeah, opinion I, on I it. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it either. I, I truly don't think so. I think, especially if a guy like that gets the final two, basically, just from what I saw in that episode yesterday, how he thinks he runs everything. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. But a guy like that, when he gets the final two, he's going to say, hey, listen, I did everything. I did everything. Uh, this, this, this. He's going to take credit. And, and a lot of the times when people say that in the final two, if he even gets there, I'm just, you know, throwing scenarios. Yeah. The jury will be like, you know what? Screw you, buddy. That's I did that, not you. Exactly. And people like that won't. Exactly, man. They're going to be like, you know what? Fuck you. You think you did it? My vote's going. And that, that's just the way, it, that's the way it works. So I, I think he has to change his attitude when he gets the final two. Uh, and you know, because the way he was doing it in yesterday's episode is literally, he's like, no, no, nothing goes on unless I say it goes on. You're not going to go on the block unless I say you go on the block, uh, kind of things like that. I see, um, him starting to crack. I really, really do. I see, I think, um, yeah, I think you're right. He's, he's definitely starting to crack. Uh, and it happens. It, it's, it's actually at that point in the game where people are going to start cracking and you know, he's starting to get, so here, how it works is, you know, there's a Sam and Adam. And, and uh, Anthony was pushing for Sam to go for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. And then now Adam's like, okay, well, you know what? Why don't we take Corey out? I mean, it's the same thing. Me and Sam or you and Corey, it's the same thing. And Anthony starts losing it, man. He's like, no, 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 not going to happen. And, you know, it, it's like, well, what, what's the difference? Why, what, why is Corey okay to stay, but Sam wasn't okay to stay? And I really liked Adam for that and how he just kind of put it out there. But the way he did it was so calm that it kind of got Anthony kind of, you know, jumping up and down. And I liked that. I liked how Adam did it. And I liked how Anthony kind of, you know, he's shooting himself in the foot. And I think, I think it's going to start crumbling. And, uh, you know, honestly, man, like I thought, I thought he was doing okay. But again, like I say, you're the one that's in the house. And uh, you you witness it all firsthand, and, and and that's the way it is. Now, one thing, you know, from playing when I played, it's like 
you could tell for me i could always tell who was working together simply just by where people were hanging out in the, in the house and uh that's why for me it, it was kind of weird to see how people weren't piecing things together because to me it's so obvious man if you're in the house and these four people are hanging out all day uh or whatever obviously they're working together if they're in the bedroom for four hours together or they're in the the whatever the pantry for two hours together you're not just getting a banana for two hours you're you're obviously yeah. doing something in there you know what i'm saying so it, for me it was always easy to piece together who was working with who and that's why i just it, it just it, it i couldn't understand why people couldn't piece it together and another thing i want to say so you have you know the the pretty boys or whatever they want to call themselves i even cringe when i say yeah, that man it's so bad like, who it's, with that one? um i don't even know but it's horrible man i cringe even saying that i don't even want to say it uh, but then you have like the other side, but it's like there was Eddie and you and Esty and uh, Damien and Kaylin or whatever. But what what was it that you guys couldn't all kind of get together and say, guys, we got to work together. Uh, let's form something out. Like it almost seemed like you guys were kind of just a, a couple of duos or individuals uh, instead of like a team. Say, hey, guys, these guys are do obviously doing something. Let's team up and let's go. Uh, what what what's what was stopping that? Like was it just mistrust being thrown your way? Like to what was it? Uh, well, before, okay, before Kaylin left in week three, I think people were definitely starting to see the board of everything, um, as like you said, duos. So people were seeing, uh, Sam and Adam as a duo. They were seeing Anthony and Kaylin as a duo before, uh, he got close with Corey. They were seeing Esty and myself as a duo. Then they were seeing Dane and I as a duo. And then they were seeing Dane and Esty as a duo. Like it was all very duos, like Chelsea and Eddie as a duo, like, so putting everything together, like the thing is, is like when you're in the house, it's so different. Like it's the most different thing ever. Like in being in the house, the problem I had was that, yes, I like this theory of these four dudes working together makes sense to me, especially because, you know, just listening to them talk, Adam saying how he's such a big fan of the show, Dane saying the same thing. Like, yeah, like there's these great alliances, um, whatever blah 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 the first thing I thought of was the brigade and I'm like well that would make sense they wanted to copy that but they aren't seen together a lot so I'm guessing in the mornings they'd all get up super early and go to the pantry together and or the secret room or whatever but yeah before then it was people were definitely viewing the board as duos and trios yeah fair enough fair enough um, now what what are your thoughts on the secret room like what's what do you think about it all just the whole thing with the with the boxes. I mean, I guess you don't know di any different because that's in yeah. the house that you lived in. So yeah. I guess that's like that's that's what you know. But what are your thoughts on it? Was it just because like it, it, to, to me, it's like an extra room to hang out. We used to have a pool where that secret room is. That's where the pool was. And you guys don't have a pool, right? Yeah, I wish we had a pool. So uh, bad. So here, it's funny. It's so funny you say that. Because, okay, so we had a pool. The only person that used it was me in Dallas. Nobody touched the pool. Nobody. Why? Nobody. I don't know, man. I don't know. The pool is like the size of like if you put two cars together, it's yeah. like small. You could go for like you could almost touch end to end just by sprawling out. It was small. <laughs> oh uh, but whatever. We used to have fun with it. Who cares? You know, but anyway, yeah, nobody used it. I think that's why they got rid of it and they put that that secret room in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what were your thoughts on like all the boxes? Like, was there writing in the paper and like on the paper and stuff? Yeah, so we had like a ton of different theories when this room got opened up. I, I thought it was the have not room at first. I was like, this is the have not room. Like, this is where we're gonna have to sleep. Like, just all this bullshit. Um, but then as boxes started coming in, we started counting. Okay, so it's day four, the room opens up, it's day seven. Now there's 20 boxes in here, whatever it was. Like, every day was, um, was something to remember basically yeah, yeah. at first people were going through all the papers they were going through all the binders all the newspapers trying to find connections with numbers or names or dates like anything but as more and more information kept piling up and all the names for all the sheets in there like there are like brand names and stuff I was like there's no way this has any any relevance to any competition or anything like that so I I just wrote it off like I didn't spend a lot of time in that room honestly because I thought it was – if there was something that was going to happen with it, it was going to happen later on. I think yeah. for right now, the cameras in that room – truthfully, I thought those cameras um, and that room was for Corey to see what was happening. And then I thought every time she got called to the DR, she was gaining information about everyone else. Because, you know, Arissa said that there is um, – you know, there's, like, spies among you and, you know, everyone's, like, a secret agent. I thought Corey coming in after everything that – 
that was happening in that room because that room opened up uh, two days before she got into the house. So I thought that room was the room where she could go in and um, to the diary room and get little clips of like what, what conversations were being had, like who was working together. So I didn't want to spend time in there in case, you know, it would give anything away to her. But everyone has different theories about that room. And now that's, it's actually come into play. That's interesting because I never even knew that. that that's, that's actually really interesting. I never even would have thought of that. So that's the thing. And that just goes to show when you're in that house, man, yeah. your mind is just like you take anything and it's like this has got to be it. Because yeah, you, you're is. always expecting something for sure. Uh, that's that's awesome. I never even would have thought of that. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but and that, that brings me to my next. So what did you think of Corey coming in? Like what did you think? Uh, when you, listen, I've never had someone, actually, that's not true. I had Cindy come back in halfway through the season, but she already played. So she got evicted okay. and came back. But as of someone that, uh, you know, what was it? Week two, she came in. Yeah. Week two. So, oh, well, you know, after the first eviction. So technically it was like, like Laura left and then 15 minutes later, she walked through the door. Okay. Okay. So the end of week one. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, to me, it'd be like, someone's coming into your house. Like she, what is she doing here? That's what, that's what my mindset would be like, no, 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 this is our house. Like, what are you doing coming into our house? You got to go. So yeah. what was kind of like the, the mood and what was like your thoughts when she walked in? It's like, okay, we just got rid of somebody. We're down to 13 people or whatever it is. Oh no, wait, never mind. Uh, just kidding. We got another one in. It's back to 14 or whatever it is. Like, what are your thoughts kind of when you saw her walking in the door and down the stairs? Um, I was honestly, we, we all had speculated it because we all thought there's no way we're having a season with, you know, just 14 of us. Like that doesn't make sense at all. So we had all really speculated it. Um, so that when she walked in, everyone kind of said like, okay, she's got to go first. You know, she, she wasn't here for this first week. Like we all have somewhat of a bond together now. And if she doesn't go now, she's not going to go till way later on in the season. And Kaylin was the first person to say that actually. Kaylin, uh, said to all of us, she said, this looks like the type of person that if you don't get them out now, they're going to ride to like final four, final three situation. Yeah. And, you know, Kaylin might be right unless Corey leaves tonight. But uh, yeah, so the house was on board with Corey leaving. But then as the week progressed and Chelsea got the, or sorry, um, no, that was week two, right? Yeah. As the week progressed, Dane had his HOH and everything. Um, Kira had been blowing up like emotionally, like they're, their emotions kept getting the best of them. Like they, they kept crying and like kind of just making things up out of nowhere. And everyone was like, where is this coming from? And it was just a lot of turmoil in the house. Just on, just, it was just weird. So we were like, okay, Kira's got to go. And then Pe Dane puts Mackie up and then Mackie starts, you know, self deprecating, like just going off, you know, going and saying, why don't you put Kiki and Kira up? Like Mackie, you and I are working together. Why are you throwing out my name like that? Like, is that smart for you? And then goes and tells Dane, yeah, man, I might put you up next week if I win. Like, there are so many things that it, it was such a, such, a, such a week of so many things being said that Corey diminished. Like, yeah, the sure. target Corey had walking in got smaller and smaller as conversations kept happening between Kira and whoever and Mackie and whoever. Like, yeah, they were going sure. Corey was going down, and that's where Corey is where she is right now. See, and that's the thing is, is, is sometimes it's all it takes is a week like that and someone can fall back in the shadows and kind of right. be forgotten about. And it's like, hey, well, now there's a new enemy or a new big threat in front. And as long as there's someone in front, you're exactly. safe. And that's that's the way it is, man. And it's – you're right. Like usually how it is is when people come in, uh, they got to go right away. But then there's always something that happens or something that gets in the way. And, yep. and that's actually something I want to talk about when you brought up Mackie. Um, you know, the guy never see, watched a season, I guess, or maybe he saw last season or something. I don't know what it was, but he's not familiar with the yeah. show, right? Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. And, and it's, that's the stuff for me personally. And, and listen, I don't care if you watch the show or not, and you're on the show. Good for you. But if you're going to go on the show, do your homework, like do your yeah. home, know what you're getting yourself into, at least be familiar with the game. So, you know, when you get in there, it's okay. You're not learning as you go. Uh, this way you at least kind of have some ideas like for him, for instance, him telling Dane, he's going to put him up next week. Uh, what, you know, it's like, what are you yeah. doing, man? That's, that's, you just don't do that. That was a hundred thousand dollar mistake. It's a hundred thousand dollar mistake. And you literally, that's just, that's something I think if you had a little bit more experience with the show, he'd be like, okay, I can't do that. That's something you just don't do. You kind of butter them up and say what they want to hear or whatever it is. Uh, but no, he's just like, no, you know what, bud, I'm going for you. You put me up. And it's just like, man, what are you doing? I'm literally sitting on my couch like, oh, here you go, bud. See you later. Like you're done. <laughs> and like you just, you're literally done. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, whatever. And that's like, Hey, he did his thing. So, um, 
Uh, well, the other thing too, uh, Kaylin came in and said she was 29, and then people didn't believe Corey was 29. Oh, I felt bad for Corey on that one. Uh, yeah, she's uh, yeah. Yeah, she's 29, no, but yeah. people were kind of questioning that uh, and stuff like that. So um, that's another question. So, what do you think about Kira? And that's something actually I want to ask you too. Is you know, you're Kira, and then yeah. there's Kira. What are the chances? What are the chances to have two on the same season? Like. Where, where did that go wrong? You know, as a casting or whatever, you should think, okay, you're not going to put like three atoms in there or whatever. <laughs> uh, you're just not going to do that. So yeah. what did you think? Uh, what did you think of that one when you, when you uh, heard that Kira had your name? And two, what did you think of Kira in the house? Like, did you guys get along? Uh, all the backstory? What's up? Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of like uh, similarities between Kira and myself. I mean, obviously our names and then secondary, like they're a bartender. I'm also a bartender. Um, they're queer, I'm queer. Like there's there's a lot of like similarities there. And that was one thing we were doing in the house too. We were we were looking at all the similarities between people. So like Anthony and Sam have the same birthday. Like there's just so many little like things that kind of overlap. It's weird. So we were like, oh maybe everyone's a secret agent. Like we were trying to figure out if people knew each other like before the show or whatever. But I upon meeting Kira, I thought they were wonderful. I was like, okay, this is great. Like um, we have a non-binary person here too, which is, I think is totally radical and the fact that they have this platform now to educate tons of canadians unreal like honestly unreal um on a game perspective it got pretty difficult because kira's emotions got the best of them and in turn made forming relationships with them a uh, little testing because any information you would give them they would run to other people to like prove like how much you can trust me because i'm telling you this thing that this person told me and there were just little things like that. Um, I don't know. It's it's difficult. I think Kira really had it out for me because they did partially blame Chelsea leaving on me because they said, you know, like, oh, if you hadn't talked to Dane about uh, Chelsea, you know, she wouldn't have gone up and gone home. But in my perspective, I'm like, Kira, a week before, Chelsea put me up on the block. Like, Chelsea gambled with my life. Like, I had my own reasons for thinking that Chelsea leaving would be beneficial to me. Yeah, Didn't sure. realize that Chelsea leaving would be actually partially my demise in the end, because then it came back to bite me in the ass because Kira was so upset about that with me. But I don't know. I think their game has actually progressed over this, over this season. And I'm interested to see if they were to win an HOH, what exactly they would do. Yeah, fair know. enough. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. I, I think from day one until now, Kira's game has, has really improved. I think yeah. li this week uh, they're doing a really good job. Just kind of, and, and I like how, I like how they um, like kind of, I, I don't know, like the way they talk to people, it's very like dry, but it's to the point. And yeah. I kind of like that, how, how uh, Kira will put people kind of on the spot, but not on purpose. And I don't know. I, I, I kind of like how they do it. I kind of like, um, I, I don't think Kira gets enough credit for what they're doing. Maybe not, I'm not going to say that Kira is like this mastermind, but um, <laughs> I don't think they get enough credit for what they're doing in the house. Um, right. Good and bad. I think good and bad. Uh, but I agree with you. I like how uh, the platform is great. I, I was getting educated on it myself. I'm not, you know, I, I wasn't too familiar with the non-binary stuff and all that stuff. And I'm very glad that, uh, that Kira uh, kind of explained it for like dummies like me. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, Hey, it's great. I think it's great. I absolutely do. And I think that Canada does a really good job uh, casting people from all different backgrounds and all different uh, races and everything. I think they do a really, really good job. And they're always trying to, to you know, uh, include everybody. And I, I like that. Okay. So I'm all for it. I'm definitely all for it. And actually, uh, Kira is in Montreal, which isn't far from me. She, uh, uh, they're going to have good uh, – Dre and William are in Montreal too. Yeah. SD is uh, not far too from me and them too. So – we have a, a good little family pretty close by. So Kira and Esty are going to be in good hands when, when, once it's all said and done. So who right now, who do you want to see? So who do you want to see win? Who do you think is going to win? And who do you want to see walk out the door and go to jury? Right now. Like, okay. right, right, like um, th right at this moment. At this moment, I think it would be a uh, smartest decision for the house to... <sighs> God, that's difficult, man. It's difficult. As much as I think Corey is an incredible competitor, I think Corey totally, like many people, you know, went into that HOH and just got, you know, sucked into this force field of being uh, in power. And, you know, listened to Anthony way more than she should have. Got rid of Sam, 
What are you doing, Corey? It was Dane. Dane is the, he is the person who wanted to backdoor you the most out of everybody. Like, this is why I'm saying Dane is going to win it all. Because he is so good at planting these seeds and getting other people to take the fall for it and to think that they actually were the ones to do it. Adam genuinely thinks it was his idea. Like, Adam is like, yes, I as Adam think this was my idea. But Adam, it wasn't. It was Dane's idea. But Dane put it in your head so much that it was your own idea that now you believe it. Like, God, I am such a fan of Dane. Had I not been in the house with him, I would have been rooting for him all the way. Heck, I was in the house with the guy. I was still rooting for him all the way. I just yeah, didn't I, want him to take me out. I wanted us to go further together. So, I, 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 you know, I agree. I think he's doing a really good job. I think he, like, his social game is, is incredible. He's doing really, really good. And I, I've, I've always said – uh, the social game is everything, man. If you have a good social game, you're in good with everybody. Nobody's going to want to put you on the block because they think you're your friends. Um, they're going to give you information. And on top of that, no, not only does he have a really good social game, the guy's a beast, man. He's, you know, he's yeah. winning at all these competitions. I, I think he's doing a great job. And I'm always the kind of guy I will always give credit where it's due. Uh, mm-hmm. The guy, he's doing a really, 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 really good job. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think he's doing, he's doing a really, really good job. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's, I can't wait to meet him too. The two people I want to meet, the two people I cheer for, man, it was you and Dane. Those are my two people. Those are my two pregame. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, so you think Dane's going to win or you want him to win? I think Dane has a really, really good shot of winning. If Dane makes it to final two, I think the only person that could beat him at this point possibly would be Adam, but I still think that would be difficult. Uh, it depends how things play out. It depends where Anthony's vote would lie and where Mark would put his vote as well. Um, between the two of them, I, I both think that they both have a really good shot. Um, you know, Esty, I love her. She's my girl. I want her to go far, but she hasn't made a move yet. And partially me leaving and saying my whole thing about Dane, it was like a wake-up call for Esty. I was trying to get it to be a wake-up call for her. I wanted the whole house to be there and for the whole house to be like, hey, just so you guys know, Dane is killing this right now. Like, just from an objective point of view, like, if someone doesn't take a shot, this guy's going all the way. Like, 100%, 100%. I um, loved it. I thought You were bang on. I, I, th- I loved it. When you went out and you did that, I was like, that's, that's you, you made the game start. People are going to start opening their eyes, and they're going to see it. Like, you yeah. literally told it. Like, man, but I couldn't believe how everyone was like, yeah, whatever. Like, not maybe, <laughs> yeah, whatever, but, like, Esty was, like, back with him. And, like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like... You know, but again, we're at home. We're not in there. We don't understand what the the dynamics are in the house. But to me, it's like yes, Kiki. Like yes, buddy. And uh, and everyone's just like, yeah, okay. Well, we don't believe it. Like I feel like nobody's believing anything. Uh, all the right answers. They're kind of believing all the wrong answers. Uh, now, does that go to Dane's social game, or is Dane doing anything about it, or is it just you think it's just the people they're just like doubting themselves, or what, what do you what do you think the reason is? Why do you think everyone's just like ah, oh, whatever? I don't believe it. You know, it's a mix of everything. I think Dane has positioned himself really well. I mean, he does have amazing relationships with a lot of other people. In Esty's particular case, and I told her this before I left, I said, because she said to me so many times, like, Kiki, you've got three votes. You just need one more. You know, you've got me. You've got Dane. You've got Damien. And I told her, I was like, out of those three, I know I've got you. I I can think that I have Damien if I can get another two numbers. But I was like, I don't know if Dane would vote for me because it wouldn't make sense for his game. For his game, if I left, that's good. I'm better at competitions um, than some other people here. On top of that, like, I tell it like it is. And thirdly, me out of the way, who do you have, Esty? You have Dane. He's the closest person to you. He knows that. And you will ride with him. You're not going to go against him. Um, so, yeah, I think he's, he's just done really well thinking of the weeks ahead rather than just the current week or one week ahead. And I was trying to do something similar, but uh, it's hard because I didn't position myself well enough with other people. Like, if I didn't like you, like, I just kind of knew yeah. that. And yeah. honestly, like, yeah, bit the bullet at the end there with the blood veto thing. I think Kira not using the blood veto on me was definitely not a strategic game move for their game. Obviously not for mine either, because it caused me to be evicted. But... I, know what it, I know what it feels like for those twists, man. It sucks. Trust <laughs> me, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I think that was definitely more of a personal shot, though. Like, if people were playing more objectively, I think the game itself, up until this point, would have played out a lot differently than it has. I yeah, think for sure. I still been in the house, for sure, too. So, if okay, so if, if let's say SD wins HOH tonight, mm-hmm. who, who do you think she would put up? Oh, my gosh. I think she would put up Mark. And I think she would put up uh, Anthony. I think, she like- put, I think she'd put up Mark and Anthony. 
And if one of them were to take themselves off, she would probably put up Kira as a pawn. I would say right now she wouldn't want to go against Dane or Adam because she knows she can't play next week and one of them could easily come after yeah. her. So I think from Esty's perspective, it would make the most sense to put up Mark and Anthony. I mean, Mark put her on the block. She has that as leverage. Like, hey, man, you put me up. I'm just returning the favor. In regards to Anthony's case, it could be the same thing as, well, maybe Anthony, if he's talking down to her, she could say, like, look, the way you've acted lately is not, it's not cool. I don't know. But I would, I would think for her that would be a good option. I would love to see her just make a huge move and put up Adam and Dane both just to see what would happen. But that's just, that's just me. <laughs> now, okay, so who, who do you think would go after Kira if they – okay, let, let's, let's just – Kira – so who would go after Kira if they won HOH? Anybody? Uh, like right now, this week? Right now, yeah. Nobody. Just, nobody. nobody. Uh, Esty? I don't think anyone either. I Damien? think it's yeah, the targets right now would be would be Mark and Anthony. I think they're on the most fragile waters. I yeah, think so that's, I'm thinking the same. I'm thinking like uh, Kira, Esty, even Damien somehow. I think they have a free week this week. I, I don't think any of them are in danger. I think it's gonna be between Mark, uh, Anthony, Dane, and uh, pretty much the four boys, man. I think I think one yeah. of them are gonna be in trouble this week. And I think cracks are gonna start, like I said, with uh, Anthony getting all upset about Corey. Once Corey walks out that door. If, if that's what happens tonight, I, I don't know. Uh, but if that's what happens tonight, uh, I'm telling you, man, I think there's going to be some fireworks. And I think the game is going to explode tonight, like or tomorrow, Good. whatever it is. I think, I think the fireworks are starting, man. And it's uh, awesome. For sure. So you've watched, have you watched every season? Have you watched all the Canadian ones, all the American ones? Yeah. You've, okay, yeah. not all the American ones, but most of them. Yeah. So, I mean, you're very familiar with the show. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you tried out? How many times did you try out for Canada? This is my first time. Oh, one and done. That's like yeah. me. One and done. So what? why did you wait so long? Why didn't you try out season one to whatever, six? Honestly, I only started watching it like a year and a half, two years ago. And then okay. last year, I thought about trying out, but I was in Thailand at the time. Nice. And then I got bit by the monkey. And then everything happened <laughs> for a reason because that story propelled me to get on this season so everything i believe i'm a true believer in everything happens for a reason yeah uh for sure that's yeah one and done that was like me i i did one uh, i tried out for season three and that was it that was the one time Aww. but yeah that's all that's awesome that's too bad you know what there's some people and i always say there's some people you always click with right away and there's people that you, you gotta whatever and uh you know the second you came out we talked i was like yeah man we clicked right away i, I just i don't know man I, it's you're very easy to talk to uh, and, and all that stuff. So a player like you in the house, man, I, I always feel is, is, is a danger as a player is a very dangerous player. Someone that can get along with everybody uh, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to say, I think, I think Kira, Esty, Damien somehow is safe. I don't think they're going to have any heat this week. Um, if Dane wins, who goes up? Mm. Oh gosh. Okay. If Dane were to win, I think he would, he would take a shot at Anthony and, Honestly, maybe, maybe Mark or Damien, depending, yeah. depending on uh, how they play their cards. I think, you know, there's no way he's going to go against Adam or Essie at this point. But I think, yeah. and I think for Dane to put up Kira, I think for himself, he wouldn't do it because that wouldn't be a big enough move. Dane is someone who's been, you know, building, 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 building his resume. He doesn't want to take a step back from his resume, you know? He's going to want to do something bigger than that. You know, Kira can go at any time. He's going to be looking at a big shot. I would, I would think that going after Anthony would be a good position for him solely because Anthony has been a person who's been able to create really good relationships with other people. Though he doesn't have the competition wins, um, those relationships that he's formed can propel him even further in this game. So getting him out now would be really smart. Also, then he can keep his relationship with Mark, who has a less chance of winning another competition. Between the two, though Anthony hasn't won yet, I do think Anthony has a better shot of winning than Mark would. So I would, I would, I would think if Dane were to think of this, he would go for Anthony. But yeah, have knows. you heard? Have you heard uh, Mark's rap? The days. Yes, he would tell me that all the time. It's like he would be serenading me. Yeah, like, he's <laughs> <laughs> like he. Oh, man. Day one in this place, Adam wins, HOH, day three, what a shot, Laura and Damien, oh, like, I literally yeah. know it, I know it, he said it to me so many times. Oh, man, that's oh, crazy. Yeah. Like, listen, I, hey, it's a, it's an impressive, it's an <laughs> impressive thing, okay, but the fact that you know it, 
the fact that you know it, what's this guy doing, man? If he's telling people his rhyme, you know what I mean? Like, this is stuff he should keep to himself. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he should be the only one to know this. But uh, anyway, that's that's Mark. That's a, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, um, I, I know. he was trying to get close to me. But I honestly thought he was just trying to play me the whole time. So I had no time for it. I was like, Mark, I don't care. Like, you're trying to play me. Like, I'm not about this. Apparently, no, what? Okay, <laughs> let's say let's say you didn't think he was trying to play you. Was it working? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, that's great. Listen, uh, so Kira, me on the show. <laughs> Kira, yeah. love talking to you, man. You're amazing, love and you. I can't wait to meet you at finale. It's uh, what a few weeks away. Yeah. A few weeks and, away. Yeah, I'm gonna have this with me. Oh but... <laughs> shit! How's your foot? How's it's it? Talk good. to me. What you? Do? Hey, at least it's in one of these now. So. I can actually like walk on it, but yeah, it's doing good. It should be, it should be fine in the next like month or so. Oh man. See, I know, but man, I dislocated <laughs> my shoulder like a year ago and it's, oh man. Uh, but anyway, I hurt. Yeah. So I know about getting hurt on the show. I hurt my hand on the show, uh, whatever. <laughs> and it sucks, man. It sucks. But you know what? You had the best exit ever. Uh, Tomas, Tomas, uh, walked you out, right? Did, yeah. Yeah. He me out. What a guy. Yeah, he's a little stud, man, and he fixed you up. He carried you out. That's awesome, man. So you have the best exit uh, ever, but uh, good for you. But Kira, it's always good to talk to you. I, like two, three weeks, whatever it is, I'll be seeing you. First round's on me. Ah! And uh, can't wait to chat, man. Can't wait to chill and stuff. Can't wait to see you, Bruno. You are honestly the best ever, ever. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Love talking to you. You know I'm always here. Reach out anytime. Uh, you're the best. So thank you very much. I mean, hey, man, that's awesome. Thanks for coming to chat and everything. You're the best. So uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, take care of your foot. <laughs> take care of your foot. And uh, we'll have a drink in, in, in a couple of weeks. We're going to have more than one drink. Oh, but it's going to get wild. <laughs> All right, Kira. Thank Bye, you so Bruno. much. Thanks. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.